Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mildra, and I am your Gaming Monk for the evening. This is day 19 of the RPG A Day 2019 challenge. Today's word is scary. <clears throat> now, back on Halloween, I did a list of, of uh, horror RPGs that are worth bringing to the table. Stuff like Void, Lesser Shades of Evil, Unhallowed Metropolis, and The Laundry. My mindset when it comes to horror games is I don't quite agree with this notion that there's a certain way that you should be doing it. Like, a lot of people seem to think that the only way to do horror is if you're doing something like Call of Cthulhu or if you're doing something like Ravenloft. And while I love both of those games, don't get me wrong, but I remember reading a review for Chill way back in the day where... It called it a horror game for the easily frightened and said that it was too camp. Even though Chill was very much trying to evoke the ha evoke Hammer and Universal that kind of terror. It was trying to do the it was trying to do that kind of kitsch monster. And well, the amount of kitsch and the amount of silly is something that's ultimately left up to the GM. It's one of those cases where I don't like the notion of tradition for its own sake without a legitimate reason. And when it comes to horror, I think you can do multiple avenues of it. Plus, when you have an entire generation that grew, that grew up on television horror through, through stuff like the Buffyverse or stuff like the Evil Dead movies, trying to emulate that into your campaigns is not something outside of the realm of possibility. Now, personally, I've been very cautious about running horror games with the RVT crew, mostly because I know their background. You've got a lot of people who love the snark and cut their teeth on Minnesota's greatest export, Mystery Science Theater 3000. Because of that, trying to establish horror and trying to establish proper atmosphere is something that is going to be a very tricky affair. Not impossible, but tricky. And to that end, I think I've only t I've only really tackled horror elements twice in the three years that I've been with them. Well, four years technically. One of them was Cthulhu Tech, which was more me which is more me flexing the mech muscles than anything else, with a little bit of horror aspect. And the worst use of stealth I've ever seen. No, I'm not letting you go on that one, Mike. And Degenesis. Which I love the Genesis's system. I love its I love its um rule set. I love its setting. I th I think that you can make a dozen or so lore videos on its setting alone. But the story that I was given was very much written like it was a um replay that I might see in a Japanese tabletop. Like there wasn't a whole lot of wiggle room for me to deal with. That said, I did like the atmosphere, and I did like how I was able to creep people out with it. Which is always important. But the Genesis isn't necessarily a horror game. And that's kind of how I've approached things. I Instead of trying to explicitly do a horror game, I've tried to do games with, el with elements of horror, but also elements of other things. Like, instead, instead of trying to do... Instead of trying to outright do, say, Resident Evil, I would try and do something more akin to Alone in the Dark. It, again, it's not outright trying to pr trying to present horror, but more of a slow bit, but more of a slow build. Plus, there's other aspects because just doing doing straight up survival horror, as you might see in a Resident Evil game, would make for a very restrictive game. It's something that could work as a board game, but as a long form RPG. Where your where the um, interaction is going to be somewhat minimal, it requires a different approach, in my opinion. And that's really the key. Horror in film and in, and in visual mediums comes from atmosphere rather than the scary monster. I think the same needs to be applied when doing a scary RPG. 